In this video, we're going to focus on the hyperbola. So again, looking at the hyperbola with the center of HK, the definition of a hyperbola is very similar to the definition of the ellipse. The ellipse was that the sum of the distances from the two foci, that that sum remained constant. For a hyperbola, because we're dealing with subtraction, we're dealing with minus in between, we're looking at the absolute value of the difference being constant. Uh, the other thing I want to point out that I didn't point out in the 10.11 video is that the relationship between C, A, and B is a little different. So instead of C squared being A squared minus B squared, as it was in the ellipse, for the hyperbola, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Um, everything else is listed here for you. So let's just take a look at our first example. I do want you to keep in mind that for the asymptotes, quite often you will not be uh, you will not see the asymptotes on a graph of the hyperbola, but if you are asked to graph it, the asymptotes are crucial. Let's take a look at our first example, and we want to find basically everything and then sketch the graph using the asymptotes. And so I'm actually going to not sketch it by hand because you don't want to see that. But what I've done is I've given you a pretty easy example, easy just because I'm not making you complete the square. I feel like we've done enough practice of that in the last videos. So here I'm really just going to identify things that I need to know. And so I should be able, remember I'm trying to find H and K and A and B and C. So I can find most of those without really breaking a sweat. The first thing is that I know that this Y value came first, and that's how I knew that the transverse axis was going to be vertical. And therefore, the value below that, of course, is A squared. So A squared is 225, so the square root of that is 15. The B value is below the X minus H squared, so that is the square root of 64, or 8. And C squared is equal to... 15 squared or 225 plus 8 squared or 64, which is going to give me 289, which means the square root of 289 is 17. So I have A, B, and C, and I haven't had to do that much work yet. And I can also find H and K without doing any work because H is the value that is always being subtracted from X, which is 5 and k is the value that's being subtracted from y, which is a negative 3, because I would have had to subtract a negative 3 to get a positive 3. So really, I have found almost everything I need, um, except for, of course, the asymptotes. So let's just go ahead and find um, everything here in my table. I'll start with the center. I'm going to move this out of the way just because I feel like I'll probably need the room. So the center is h comma k as always five comma negative three the vertices are also five comma negative three but remember for the vertices i'm adding and subtracting a so that's plus or minus 15. so all of these are just going to fall in a row on the transverse axis so that's going to give me five comma negative three plus 15 and then negative 3 minus 15. And then I'm going to find the foci. And that's also 5, negative 3. But I'm adding and subtracting C, which is 17. So that's 5, comma 14. And 5, comma negative 20. And then the last is the asymptotes. And the asymptotes are equations of lines, and those are the ones that you're probably not going to see on the graph. Um, but if you're asked to graph it, you need to have the asymptotes, otherwise it's going to be really difficult. So we've got y is equal to k, which is negative 3, plus or minus a over b, and then x minus h, which is 5. And then I'm going to simplify a little bit. That's going to give me negative 3 plus or minus. And when I distribute, I'm going to keep 15 eighths as 15 eighths because obviously that's going to be a fraction and I can slope a graph slope more easily when it's a fraction than a decimal. But I can go ahead and turn this into 9.375. So it's negative 9.375. 
The important thing to remember here is that it's plus or minus the entire expression. So when I'm writing my two um, asymptotes, the first time it's negative 3, and then it's going to be positive 15 eighths x, and then plus negative 9.375, so that's minus 12.375. And the second time, I'm going to look at the minus, and that's going to be then negative 15 eighths x, and then it would be negative 3 minus negative or plus 9.375, so that gives me plus 6.375. So that's everything I need, and that was not very difficult. And then I'm going to let Desmos um, do the work of graphing for me. And as you can see, I've just labeled all of the points that we had found. And then these two lines, um, the two asymptotes, are the two lines that I have um, plotted in the dotted line. So let me just explain why asymptotes are important. Obviously, they go through that point 5, negative 3, which is the center. And then to graph a um, hyperbola, you would make the each part, each arc, go through the vertices. And then you would use the asymptotes as a guide. So as I continued this further and further and further, it's just going to get closer and closer to the asymptote. So pretty straightforward. Hopefully that makes sense. Don't be afraid to use Desmos. Let's do one last example where we are working in reverse to find the standard form of the equation given certain characteristics. So the first thing I notice is that they've given me the center. So I know that the center is 0, 0, therefore h is 0 and k is 0. What else do I notice? Well, I also notice that all of my y values are the same. They're all k. And so that tells me that I'm dealing with a horizontal transverse axis. I also know that the vertex, to find a vertex in that format, I'm going to take h plus or minus a comma k. And so I already know that h is 0 and that k is 0. And so my question is, what would a have to be in order for a vertex to be 6? Well, obviously, a would have to be 6. What else can I find? Well, I know that if the focus, uh, let's do a different color, if the focus is found by h plus or minus c comma k, and I know that h is 0, and k is 0, and my focus is 10, what would I have to have c be in order for that to be 10? Well, c would have to be 10. And so now the only thing I'm missing is b, which I can find using this expression. c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Oops, I'm just going to write that as 100. And that means 64 is b squared, and that means 8 is b. So now I have everything I need. I'm just going to plug everything right into this equation. So I have x minus 0, or just x squared, over a squared, which is 6 squared, or 36, minus y minus k, k is 0, so it's just y squared, divided by b squared, b is 8, so that's 64 is equal to 1. Up next, we're going to finally move on to section 10.2, and we're going to begin by looking at plane curves and parametric equations.